there's two ways you can be good with the cannons. You can either be naturally gifted or you can practice. I've got 1400 hours in Sea of Thieves. So I want to let you guess which one I am. Every situation in Sea of Thieves is different. Every player you meet is different. They differ in ability, expertise, and tactics. Through this video, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about cannons, and hopefully make your cannon game better. I really enjoy playing against other players. It brings a new challenge every time, because as I said, everybody's different. I enjoy playing against better players than myself because it gives me a great opportunity to learn and get better myself. I love doing this live over on Twitch, where I talk in real time about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what they're doing, what I could do better. Because the way I see it, if I lose, I want to analyze why I lost and how I can get better. If this sounds good to you and you want to ask me questions in real time, hop over to the Twitch channel. Links in the description below. If you want to improve your ability with the cannons, you've got to cover a bunch of topics. The topics we're going to cover are going to be the basics, mindsets of yourself and other players, a list of useful facts and information about the cannons and the cannonball, how and what to practice on, and lastly, all the bugs that I've personally experienced with the cannons and Sea of Thieves. When you combine all of these, these will help you be a much better player with the cannons. Let's talk basics. There isn't a one size fits all when it comes to the amount of cannonballs you need for every encounter. Everybody's accuracy differs. Everybody's experience differs. I'm gonna tell you what I like to take into every encounter that I have in Sea of Thieves. Personally, before any encounter, I like to have at least 100 cannonballs. I usually aim to farm up to 200 cannonballs while sailing around. There are a lot of other basics and startup supplies that I recommend. I have another video that details 10 solo snooping tips and tricks. This will help you if you want to understand my basic and recommended starting supplies. Click on the info card in the top right. Once you've got all the supplies that you feel like you need from wherever you choose to get them from, personally, I don't get them from the outpost. I like to pick up mine from the barrels as I'm sailing around. I find it easier to do. You need to make sure that your cannons are facing forward and they're reloaded. Once you're ship shape and ready to go, the first thing you need to address is your mindset and other players' mindsets. There's always been a stigma in games when you miss. People will try and make you feel bad. But what I say to those people is, yeah, it might have taken me 30 shots to kill you, but you're dead and I'm not. Don't get me wrong. First try gives you a good clip, but it doesn't always win you the fight. Don't let other players psych you out and stop you from using what you have at your disposal. Just remember, if you've still got 100 cannonballs left when you sink and you didn't fire every time you could, then those were wasted opportunities. I wanted to talk a bit more on cursed cannonballs here, but in the recent update, they've changed the durations of some of the cursed cannonballs and some of them might not be as effective as I would have said previously. What I will say is make sure if you find a ballast ball that you treat it like a prized possession because that is the most valuable cursed cannonball that you will find. I am going to make another video just on cursed cannonballs so look out for that there's a few things you need to know about the cannonballs themselves and we're going to run through a quick list and hopefully these will be in the back of your mind throughout the rest of the video cannonballs can travel through waves don't think that you need to adjust over the waves to land the shot it still does the same amount of damage if it hits the water or not the times you'll find yourself firing through the waves will be when a ship is really close to you predicting where the ship is through the waves is a valuable tool is something that I recommend you try and learn. Cannonballs are not affected by the wind, which means if I'm to fire a cannonball here with the wind going that way, it's not gonna fly faster and further just because it has the wind. There is a distinct hit marker whenever you hit a player. There's the kill. Or a creature in the game. By creature, I mean skeleton, kraken, megalodon, pig, snake, chicken, shark. There isn't a hit marker when you hit a ship, unless one of the creatures I mentioned before or a player is near where the cannibal hits. There is, however, a unique sound for whenever you hit a player ship, a skeleton ship, a meg, or a kraken. There are other unique sounds like hitting rocks and sand. But these are things that you'll learn yourself in time. One thing I have noticed is if you're near a fort and the fort is active and you're hearing the battle music, you won't hear the unique sounds when you hit a player ship, unless you get off your ship onto the fort island and then back onto your ship. That seems to dull the music a bit or play a different track. 
and then you're able to hear those player hit marker sounds again. It's important to know as well that all of the unique sounds you hear from hitting a player ship, Kraken, etc., they're all controlled by the in-game music slider. Same as the fort music is as well. So unfortunately, you can't just turn the fort music off to be able to hear the sounds you want to hear. Something I would like to see them change. If a cannonball hits a player directly, it will one-shot them from any amount of HP. And lastly, having my cannon set like this, if I'm to fire a cannonball and then get in, I will not fire as far as that cannonball did. You need to adjust higher to get the same distance when firing a player. Let's talk about using the cannons. The first thing you want to do as soon as you get on your ship and you've got cannonballs is you want to load and you want to move the cannons forward. This is because whenever you see something in the game that you're probably going to use your cannons on, they're very likely to be in front of you as you're going to be approaching them. It's very rare that you're going to need to have your cannons facing backwards, though of course there are situations where that is going to happen. The quickest way to be able to aim your cannons, if you're on PC, is using the keyboard, using the WSAD or whatever your movement keys are. If you use the mouse, for me with a low DPI, it means I have to do a lot more movements with the mouse across my map to be able to get to the same place as quick. You can't combine the mouse and keyboard to move faster. Having a higher DPI doesn't really seem to affect it from what I can tell on a quick test. And I believe using the controller moves at the same speed as using the WSAD on the keyboard. Because you can move more consistently with using the keyboard because there's no stopping, you just press and hold, it allows you to be able to aim faster and more accurately over time. This becomes part of your muscle memory. In a recent update, they added in, under the accessibility options, this option here called Reduce Held Interaction, which means instead of pressing and holding the button to be able to load a cannon or drop an anchor or pick up an item, you just press one key and it unloads it for you. Press it again and it loads it. I would definitely recommend putting that on. It's something that I'm still practicing with. It's something that I think is better overall for players because it means there's one less key you have to hold on to when you're doing things. And I found personally for myself, the more keys I have to hold at any one time, the harder I find it to perform actions in a game. I'm going to break right here. And if he follows me, we're probably going to have a fight on our hands. Yep, he's following. When you're trying to shoot things with the cannons, you've got to account for the waves. The waves will move your cannon up and then move your cannon down. So at any one time, you've got to make sure that you're aware of where your cannon was and where it's going to be next so that you can adjust around that. In some of the areas on the map, these waves can be really rough. In a storm, they are probably at their worst. Near an island, they're at their best because it's very flat. We're going to talk about what you're probably here to hear. Leading your shots and distance shooting. Leading your shot is when you predict where they're going to be, where you're going to be, and you try and map that up so that you hit the target. Nothing in Sea of Thieves has hit scan. When you point at a target, click, and it instantly takes damage. That's hit scan. In Sea of Thieves, everything has travel time. This is probably the meat of the video for most people, and it's learning how to lead shots and do distance shooting. There isn't a magic tip that's going to suddenly make your aim good, but we're going to go back to what I was talking about at the start of the video when it comes down to mindset. Don't worry about hitting that target first. Just make sure that every shot that you fire at least gets closer. Leading your shots is relatively easy. You just need to account for the distance, the speed of the cannonball, and where the object is or where the object's going to be when your cannibal gets there. Easy, right? At close ranges, you don't really have to do a lot of those calculations in your head. It's when it comes to the longer distances, that's when you really need to think about where it's going to go. However, mentioning the mindset again, you don't have to do such complex things in your head. You can just walk it in. So, for example, I'm going to make this unnecessarily difficult for myself and try and hit the flame on top of that fort. It was close. Usually, as the cannonball is traveling, you can see whether it's going to hit or not. So what I tend to do is, is I just walk it in. I fire, adjust, fire, adjust. Just make sure with every time you miss, you try and adjust that and use that information to get closer. If you're on a ship with multiple cannons and multiple people, Make sure you assign roles to who's doing what with which cannon. So, for example, if you're fighting a galleon, make sure one of you is hitting their cannons and one of you is creating damage down below deck. It's not always important to be creating holes that take on water. It's important to be controlling the players on their ship. Alternatively, if you have multiple cannons on the ship, one of you could be using cursed cannonballs in between every other shot 
and the other one could be just creating carnage. It really is about role assigning here. I am going to make a video on ship on ship combat. So I'm going to talk more about it there, not here. If you really want to get better at using the cannons, you've got to practice. You've got to get all the things you do before you fire down to muscle memory. Then you need to get everything that you do after you fired down to muscle memory as well so that you can concentrate on everything else that's going on around you. There are lots of things you can practice on that give you different levels of experience when it comes to firing cannons. The first thing I would say to practice on is static objects that don't shoot back. So those rocks are a perfect example. Now you could aim for the bottom part of that rock, which is much easier to hit, or you could challenge yourself and try and hit the top, which is thinner and further away, which is why it's important to have a lot of supplies when you're just sailing around. I still do this today. Once you're done with static objects that don't shoot back, the next best target is skeletons on cannon. These are great because they add a bit of danger and they also give you a hit marker when you land close or directly on the skeleton, which gives you that validation you need when you're learning to lead your shots and do long distance shooting. The great thing about these is, is that they respawn so you can, so you can keep practicing. They also do hit your ship from time to time, which gives you a bit of in combat practice. When you want to start practicing on moving targets, Use the Megalodon, they're perfect for it. They move fast, they're close, they can be erratic. They don't shoot back, they do bite, but they teach you to have your cannons in the ideal position for every time that the Meg comes around. So the Meg is circling this way, I should have my cannon facing backwards, which is one of the rare times I would have my cannon facing backwards. However, when the Meg was gonna get around here, to this side, I would have this cannon on this side ready. And it teaches you to keep your cannons loaded as well, because you don't wanna miss an opportunity. When it comes to the Meg, every time you miss an opportunity to kill it, it creates more damage on your ship, which uses more of your supplies. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I love the efficiency of it. The last two things you can practice on are the skeleton ships. The first skeleton ships you can practice on are the ones that are just randomly sailing around in the distance. These are great because you can attack these on your own terms to get the fight started. They put out a lot of damage, which means that you get a lot of in-combat experience, and it gives you practice with hitting their upper deck for keeping the skeletons off the cannons and it allows you to put holes lower deck to slowly fill the ship up. And because they don't repair, this gives you a start goal and an end goal. Whereas when you fight a player ship, they always repair. The final challenge before you move on to PvP is taking on the skeleton ship events. This gives you constant waves. It allows you to resource manage a lot better. It gives you multiple ships at the same time, which gives you that multiple ship combat experience as well. And all round is just great experience. And they've apparently nerfed the output of cursed cannibals from skeleton ships this should make it easier for a lot more people the downside to all of these things that you're doing here is that they're all scripted the final challenge really is fighting another player because they are just so random that every situation will be different just make sure that you learn from every mistake you make the last thing i want to talk about here is the bugs that i've experienced while playing sea of thieves and using the cannons and cannonballs these primarily tend to happen when the server is having a bit of a moment sometimes when I've reloaded my cannon, then gone to fire, it hasn't actually reloaded. So I've clicked, it's made the dead man's click sound. So I've thought, oh, I need to reload again. So I press reload, it then unloads the cannon. Very bizarre bug. I've seen it happen multiple times, hundreds probably. But once it starts happening, it tends to happen quite often in a fight. Another, what I believe is a server related bug, is when you reach the peak or the dip of a wave. I don't know the technical terms, I'm sorry guys. But it seems like when you reach the top of a wave or the bottom of a wave, that there is some almost ping issue that makes your cannonball fire at an exaggerated angle. Now, I don't know if this is because right at the top of the wave, when you reach it, you think, oh, I'm at the top, you fire. Then just as you fire, you've misjudged it and then it moves in a different direction, but then the angle is exaggerated. Cursed cannonballs suffer from a bug where if you select them in your inventory and then try to load them in the cannon, it sometimes still tries to load the normal cannonball. This also works in the reverse. If you're using cursed cannonballs and you try to manually select a normal cannonball, it will sometimes still load that cursed cannonball. It's as if it's one behind in the queue. This can be especially frustrating when you're about to pass a ship and you're thinking, I want to anchor this ship or I want to ballast ball them and it still fires a normal cannonball and your opportunity has been missed. Certain areas of ships you can hit and you'll see it physically hit, but you won't get a hit marker sound. One of the notable positions on a sloop is this canopy. I think this is because it doesn't actually do any damage to any part of the ship. Therefore, you don't get the sound. 
I even had it the other day where I was firing on a ship and I hit them twice. And my third shot, I physically saw a miss, but I still got a sound effect for it. No, he's there in the war, I see him. Why did I get the hit sound when I didn't actually hit? That's everything I got for you on the cannons. Let's just do a quick recap though. Make sure that you have the right mindset when you're trying to use the cannons. Don't worry about missing those first few shots. Use them as informational shots. Don't let other players get to you. If you sink a ship and you fired 100 shots and they only fired 10, you still won. It's all about the end goal there. And the most important thing is practice. Practice everything. If you're not doing anything on the ship, fire at something. I would also recommend that you record your own gameplay. So when you do lose, you can look back and see exactly why you lost. There will of course be instances where the other team was just better than you in general and there's no way you could beat them. But there are still lots of opportunities to learn from your mistakes there. If you do record your gameplay, feel free to DM it to me on Twitter and I can look it over. If you can't see what's wrong, maybe I can and I'm happy to help. Make sure the videos aren't too long, okay? I've been Tojam. I've been your temporary ships captain. I appreciate your time and I'll see you later. What does my finger smell like? Come here. It's just, it smells like cheese. Nope. Wrong. It smells like my mum. Oh, uh, wait, what? <laughs> Why would your finger smell like your mom?